Terrible events in Alaska 350 years ago, a mysterious medical pouch and a strange find in Europe that scared a lot of people. About these finds and more, see in this video. Hi friend, you're on the Curtop channel. Coptic Handbook this unique tome dates back to the 7th 8th centuries AD and was obtained from Upper Egypt. The strange looking 20 page parchment containing the text of spells for all occasions was unequivocally called by researchers the reference book of ritual power. It is generally accepted that this document was compiled by representatives of some ancient proto Christian community or sect. The book itself can be safely called a manual on ancient spells and rituals. At the beginning of the book, there is a rather lengthy series of intricate prayer texts and then pictures, spells and words of power follow. However, this document will not be able to instill fear and awe in a simple man, especially since Coptic rituals and ceremonies were not distinguished by sophistication and were more domestic. For example, the reader was offered instructions for curing leptospirosis, then this disease was quite common. You just had to read a prayer over two nails and then drive the nail so spoken into the door frame. Since 1981, this tome has been kept in one of the Australian museums. Previously, it was owned by the famous collector Michael Fakelman, but no one knows anything about the previous history of the artifact. What happened in Alaska 350 years ago? The site of the battle, which took place almost four centuries ago, was found by Scottish archaeologists in Alaska. The find, according to scientists, fully confirmed one of the legends of the Yupik people, a group of Eskimo tribes that live in the west and southwest of Alaska, as well as the Russian Far East. The Yupik people include three tribes. The Aleutics, who lived in the coastal zone of central Alaska on the peninsula itself. The Yupiks live in central Alaska and the Utes live in the Russian Far East. But back to the legend. According to legend, a world war on a local scale took place during the so-called period of bow and arrow wars. The beginning of the fighting was an incident during throwing of darts, a Yupik folk pastime. The consequences of the accident were very tragic. One of the boys accidentally hit the other in the eye with a dart. The father of the victim solved the problem more than radically. He simply knocked out both eyes of the offender. Or blinded him with darts. The legend is silent about this. Further, in accordance with the traditions characteristic of any nationality, a petty skirmish between two parents gradually involved all relatives on both sides in the conflict, which in the end resulted in a full-scale war. True, a number of scientists believe that the gouged eye was just an excuse, because due to difficult climatic conditions, all Yupiks suffered from food shortages. The entire male contingent of the village of Agalimiet, led by a certain Pangermiot, without warning, attacked another village, which was called practically the same, Kanamiot. Here it should be noted that the priest immediately warned Pengermit that the idea was doomed to failure and it was better not to start a war. However, the leader, who believed in his luck, did not believe the advice of the wise shaman and went with his army on a campaign against the neighbors. But the attack without a declaring war did not work. The villagers were not only warned but well prepared for the meeting. In the course of heavy defensive battles, the defenders counterattacked the enemy, dispersing him across the endless expanses of snow. Medical Pouch Dated to the era from 905 to 1170 AD, a bundle of psychoactive substances of plant origin was discovered in Cueva del Chileno in southwestern Bolivia. Possibly owned by a shaman of the era, the well-preserved bag contained the earliest evidence of the use of ayahuasca, a hallucinogenic tea. 
This is the first evidence that ancient South Americans could combine different medicinal plants to produce a powerful substance ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a psychedelic brew created by the indigenous people of the Amazon basin. However, the plants used to create this powerful tea are not native to the area where the bundle was found, as the altitude is too high for them to grow. This suggests that the owner of the bundle either knew where these plants could be harvested or had access to a a sizable trading network. According to archaeologists, the plants contained in the pouch could be poisonous if consumed in the wrong proportions, requiring the user to be knowledgeable about their use. The results of the study support the idea that humans have been using these powerful herbs for at least 1,000 years, combining them to go on a psychedelic journey, and that ayahuasca use may have roots in antiquity. Other items found in the leather bundle included wooden tablets for grinding various herbs, an ornate wooden wooden tube for inhaling the hallucinogenic concoction, spatulas made from llama bone, and a pouch made from the faces of three foxes. Why unplundered Barrow surprised archaeologists? The barrow, two and a half meters high and 50 meters in diameter, as it turned out, concealed a stone crypt with a supporting wall around the perimeter. The crypt itself was made of flat slabs and widened slightly towards the top. It was covered from above with wood, on which stone slabs were laid. The entrance to the crypt was on the south side and a long corridor led to it through which the dead were placed inside and the entrance was blocked with stones. Archaeologists are very lucky. The mount turned out to be unloaded and its contents will provide a huge amount of valuable information. It is already known that it dates back to the 4th century BC. The remains of six people were found inside the crypt. They were buried at different times, which means that this is a family crypt. Judging by the rich grave goods, these people belong to the upper class and apparently were the leaders of the tribes. The clothes of the buried were richly embroidered with gold plagues, and the costume of one of them may be reconstructed. The fact is that during subsequent burials, the bones of the previous one shifted and thus only the last buried person had all the details of the costume in their places. In total, more than a hundred gold objects were found. If you see me, cry. In Europe, they discovered a find that scared not only archaeologists. This news spread all over the world and even ordinary people were shocked. The water level in European rivers reached an all-time low level due to drought, as a result of which hungry stones appeared from under the water in the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, Germany, which served as markers of a critical drop in water, which foreshadowed famine. On one of them, installed along the Elbe, it is written, if if you see me, cry. The landscape of Europe this summer resembles a desert. The unprecedented drought has taken countries from the Mediterranean to Scandinavia by surprise. These stones appeared during a period of drought and crop failure, when the water level in the rivers drops to a critically low level. Stones are sunk all over Europe, but most of these medieval marks of hunger are found in Germany, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. Even the powerful Rhine became so shallow that that the transportation of oil, iron, coal, and other goods fell sharply. The lower the water level, the less cargo barges can carry. According to Dutch hydrologists, there has never been so little water in the Rhine for all the time of observing the water level. As you can see, the discovery of medieval finds is not always a good sign. Sometimes it is better not to see some finds, as they are harbinger of trouble. And these are not just omens. New tax on the Dead Sea Scrolls the Dead Sea Scrolls discovered near Jerusalem in the 1940s and 50s are among the earliest existing texts of the Hebrew Bible. While trying to date some of these scrolls, researchers found letters on fragments that were thought to be empty. Later, using multispectral imaging, lines of text invisible to the naked eye were discovered. In the past, supposedly new fragments of the scrolls were made public, but then they turn out to be a fake. The fragments currently being studied studied were part of the original collection of scrolls found at Qumran and are believed to be authentic. Dennis Mitzi, senior lecturer in Hebrew and ancient Judaism at the University of Malta, said the newly discovered lines could be linked to the book of Ezekiel, but it's too early to be sure.
flood in ancient Teotihuacan. During the excavations of Teotihuacan, a very strange detail was revealed. Houses and temples were covered with earth. Moreover, the nature of this filling did not correspond to the simple accumulation of soil over time. In this regard, even a version appeared that once the inhabitants of the city left it, before that, they carefully covered it with earth, perhaps so that their houses would not go to some conquerors. For some reason, the authors of this version were not embarrassed by the strangeness of such a decision, which has no analogues in history at all. Well, burn it, destroy it, you can do many things to spy the enemy, but to bury entire houses? Someone even calculated it took more soil to backfill than it took to create the Pyramid of the Sun. Another calculated that it took about 30 years of labor and 20,000 people to create the Pyramid of Sun. There are no such full-flowing rivers in the vicinity that they could, during the strongest flood, not only flood the city, but eventually cover it with their sediment entirely. There are no high mountains nearby from which a mud flow of sufficient power could descend. A simple tsunami could not do this either. There are only 400 kilometers to the sea in a straight line, and the height is about 2 kilometers. Archaeologists during the expedition discovered direct and obvious traces of the flood tsunami, which came from the Pacific Ocean and had a power that was quite sufficient to leave its mark in Mexican Teotihuacan. A new species of human a 146,000-year-old, or possibly older, skull dubbed Dragon Man, found at a construction site in the Harbin region of northeast China, may represent a new species of human. The scientists who published their findings in three separate papers in the Innovation in June 2021 said their analysis of the skull suggests it represents a new lineage of Homo sapiens called Homo longi. The term Dragon Man refers to the Dragon River in the area where the skull was found in 1933. The worker who discovered it hid it until 2018 when he told his family about the skull and they donated it to the Hebei Jiu University Museum. The well-preserved fossil from the Middle Pleistocene is massive, with a large skull falling within the range of modern humans combined with a mosaic of primitive and derived features, the scientists said. According to them, unlike other Homo species, the skull has a broad low face, nearly square eye sockets, flat cheekbones, and a shallow palate with large molars. Paleoanthropologist Shi Jin Ni believes that Homo longi may be even more closely related to humans than Neanderthals. Arata Sumerian Atlantis when people talk about Atlantis, ancient Greece comes to mind. There, the Greeks indulged in philosophy, thought about the ideal state. One of them was Plato, and he described the myth of a distant country where people lived happily, using the grace of the gods for their own benefit. But as for the Sumerians, they also had a myth about a distant country where people lived richly. And no, this is not Dilmun, which is the modern island of Bahrain. A more mysterious country is described here, and perhaps this is where the Sumerian language comes from. The myth is little known, unlike the myth of Gilgamesh. Nevertheless, some mythological information is enough to reconstruct the overall picture. Arata is mostly mentioned in passing in Sumerian texts. Arata is described as a place to the east of Elam where the army goes on foot. It is indirectly mentioned that a flotilla can also get there, but it is not used. The country itself is described as mountainous. The inhabitants there are well acquainted with metallurgy and mining. Moreover, they worship the same gods as the Sumerians, spoke the same language. A number of researchers placed Arata in Transcaucasia and identified it with Urartu. But the Urartians called their country Biaini, and the name Urartu was invented by the Assyrians. The Sumerians accurately point to a location to the east of their country. Here, most likely, is Iran and mountainous. Then the question arises, with whom is the culture of Arata connected? Because not a single monument of this country has yet been found. Let it seem unscientific, but it is worth identifying Arata with the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex. See how similar many artifacts are to Sumerian ones. Woolen cloth in the Sumerian style, very large eyes, as on statues in Iraq. Silver Scroll of Jerash 
This relic was discovered inside an ancient amulet about 13 centuries old. The scroll contains a text of some magic spell. In any case, the best minds from the world of science agree that this inscription belongs to the hand of, of a Jewish sorcerer who lived in a town called Jerash, now near Jordan. Surprising is the fact that the plates of the silver scroll had a thickness of no more than 0.1 millimeters, so the text had to be extracted from the scroll using advanced 3D modeling technologies. Scientists believe that the text in a language incomprehensible to science, akin to what was found on the scroll of Jerash, was used in those ancient times as a way to overcome life's difficulties, fight ailments, and as protection from evil spirits. Researchers have also put forward the possibility that magicians, like the author of this scroll, could have come up with their own language, because the different lines of the spell are very similar to imitation of Greek and Arabic. No matter how incredible it may sound, the the scroll itself was first found only in 2014 at the site of a house destroyed by an earthquake. However, scientists dated the earthquake itself as far back as 749 AD. At the same place, archaeologists found a lot of glass bottles, jewelry, coins and other items, among which was a small 5cm metal cylinder which hid one of the biggest mysteries of modern archaeology. Traces of an Ancient Cruel Slaughter In the Spanish Pyrenees, in the picturesque highlands of the Huesca region, scientists descended into a cave and found traces of an ancient massacre. El Strock's cave is located here. There were 13 skeletons in the cave. All of them were killed in different years. Most of all, nine people died 7,300 years ago. Four children aged three to seven years and five adults. These skeletons are 1,000 years older. Even inside, they found parts of ceramic products, stone tools. The bloody drama of the past blooms. Nine people, as scientists found out, after examining the remains, were killed very cruelly. They were tortured and beaten to death. They were shot from a bow and beaten with blunt objects. Genetic analysis showed that those killed could be representatives of the first wave of Neolithic migrants. It is believed that about 10,000 years ago, settlers from the Middle East spread throughout Europe. Archaeologists believe that these people fell in the struggle for the redistribution of territory. It was important for the invaders not only to occupy fertile land, the cave where the victims were found is located on a plateau, but also to demonstrate their power. The degree of violence that was used in the Pyrenees 7,300 years ago testifies to the extremely high aggression on the part of the attackers. It was once a wildly held idea that hunter-gatherers millennia ago were naturally kind and peaceful. Meanwhile, scientists say studying the evolutionary relationships among different species on Earth suggests that aggression is probably deeply rooted in human nature. Click the thumbs up under the video, subscribe to the channel, and write your kind comment. Thanks for your views! Bye, everyone!